Awesome. All right. Um, hi, everyone. We represent the Just Resilient Renewable Rikers Project. So the, the team members are Pat Keys, Patricia Smith, myself, Kiara Roman, with our advisor, Catherine Glody Silverman. In, 20, in, in February of 2021, a package of three bills were passed by the city of New York called the Renewable Rikers Act. The act required one, the closing of Rikers Island Jail Complex by 2027 with an advisory committee, two, a feasibility study of renewable generation and or storage on the island, and three, a feasibility study for the Department of Environmental Protection to assess the capacity to process wastewater and organics on the island. Before we get into the redevelopment portion of the presentation, we wanted to highlight other components of the Rikers Island Jail Closure Plan and possible risks to the overall plan. So the first risk identified is the timing of the completion of the borough-based jails. All of them may not be complete by 2027. Mm -hmm. The second is there's a mismatch of jail population with the number of beds being built. The third is government consistency in policy. The plan to close Rikers spans multiple administrations and requires coordination between many city agencies. Ad hoc policy changes in one agency may put the entire plan at risk. And finally, the ongoing federal oversight continues to shine a damning spotlight on the Department of Corrections, which seems unable or unwilling to be reformed. So there's a risk that without systemic changes, the borough-based jail plan will essentially create four new Rikers. Before we get too far away, we wanted to provide some context about Riker's location and history. So it's located here in the center of the map in the East River between the Bronx and Queens. It's part of the Bronx, but administered by Queens. It's just northwest of LaGuardia Airport. It's connected to Astoria by a three-lane bridge. And there's an out-of-service ferry terminal on the northwest tip of the island. Its name comes from the Rikers family who purchased the land in 1664 and sold it to the city in 1884. And per the image on the lower right, the island was originally 87 acres, but was expanded with landfill in the early 1900s to its current size of approximately 415 acres. And then Rikers Jail, Rikers Island Jail Complex opened in 1935. This is a quick summary of site conditions on Rikers. Most of the island is improperly capped landfill, which will increase building costs, especially if it's used for people intensive uses. Also, due to Rikers Island location, it's estimated the building costs there will be eight to 15% higher. The image on the left shows the 100 year flood map. So Rikers Island is not at risk of rising sea levels. Moving to the right, the next image shows the building height limits on the island. The majority of island indicated in orange is capped at 150 feet or approximately 14 stories. So for reference, the Newtown Creek egg, digester eggs are 145 feet tall. The third image shows noise impacts from LaGuardia. While most of the island is at a 65 decibel zone, which according to FAA standards is safe for all uses, it's expected that the majority of the island users would consider these noise levels highly annoying. The top right corner shows the building inventory, which based off of age of building, reuse or renovation would be protracted and expensive due to the likelihood of asbestos and lead. On the bottom right, it shows that Rikers is less than half a mile from a large hub of ener energy infrastructure, including five natural gas generators and a large Con Edison transmission substation. There were many proposals submitted to the request for proposals for Rikers Island, and we considered the following proposals. The top right highlights the four Upper East River wastewater treatment facilities, which would be considered uh, consolidated to the western half of Rikers Island. And the EP is currently performing a feasibility study, and it's to be completed in fall of 2023. The upper left image is from the Regional Planning Association, and it 
its vision allocated less than half of the island for wastewater uh, treatment plant, and they proposed the solar PV and a battery storage. The lower left image is from Sustainable CUNY, and it explored solar energy. Um, these proposals, however, do not have any criminal justice aspects or how it would benefit impacted communities. And other proposals were not considered mostly because they do not align with the Renewable Rikers Act scope. A key component to our proposal was to determine who the impacted communities are. And we investigated the incarcerated population over time. And the chart to the left shows the total jail population from 1993. And we see a significant decrease until 2020 when COVID reached New York City. And since then, we see a huge increase, especially in Black and Hispanic race. And the population has not decreased since then. Well, so we're only able to show a race breakdown from 2020 to 2022 because that is the data that is readily available. So additionally, the image on the left shows the disparities in New York City's justice system and how these communities are disproportionately impacted. And the upper right pie chart showed the percentages of inmates under mental observation by sex. And we'd like to highlight that 87% of females are under mental observation. So um, the lower right part charts show that um, a majority of the population are young males between the ages of 20 to 44. Um, and moreover, 79% of the incarcerated population are pretrial. The impacted neighborhoods were determined utilizing the arrest data from the Department of Corrections. Now these neighborhoods have the highest arrests within three years. And as expected, the neighborhoods includes areas in Brooklyn, the Bronx and upper Manhattan, which are all neighborhoods heavily populated with minorities. So throughout the semesters, we've morphed our vision to remove options we deemed not feasible and add insights from interviews and research. So on the screen are our three pillars to benefit impacted communities, decarbonize the power grid and support New York City climate policies. And what we mean by impacted communities is environmental justice neighborhoods and the incarcerated populations that Kiara was just talking about, both demographics and neighborhoods. And for our paper, we researched a variety of case studies and programs, some of which are listed on the screen, but we won't be walking through each of those examples today. So keeping in mind the impacted communities that Kiara outlined, there are several ways we're looking to tie environmental justice components into Rikers redevelopment. The first of which is renaming the island, which advocates have been calling on for years due to the racist legacy of the Rikers family and the dark history of the jail complex. Another way to address Rikers Island's history is by incorporating a memorial garden on the island, which would serve a dual purpose by aligning with the city's resiliency goals. But we do recommend that any renaming or memorial efforts be led by the Rikers Public Memory Project. They're working to ensure that Rikers' memory is shaped by those who were detained there, their families, and their communities through storytelling and art making. As mentioned, a consolidated wastewater treatment facility on Rikers would potentially allow four nearby plants to close, which would open those areas up for redevelopment. We recommend that any spaces being redeveloped use the city's neighborhood planning playbook, which you can see on the lower left of the screen. It's a five-phased process for city agencies to partner with communities on projects around land use, housing, jobs, and businesses. And if these spaces are developed with apartments or retail, Community solar projects could be installed in unison. With community solar, anyone with an electric bill in the five boroughs can subscribe, so it could be prioritized for the formerly incarcerated, regardless of where they live. We also considered how components of our vision could be paid for. So one possible funding source for Pillar 1 is through Biden's Justice 40 initiative, which will ensure that 40% of the overall benefits of certain federal investments 
flow directly to environmental justice communities. Job training is another way to benefit impacted communities. For instance, some states have programs that allow the incarcerated to become certified wastewater treatment plant operators. But jobs should also be created in the changing energy sector, like an offshore wind. NYSERDA recently identified offshore wind jobs with the highest projected workforce gaps in New York, shown on the right side of the screen. The emphasis should be on permanent jobs, not temporary construction jobs. So we recommend focusing on the circled positions, the plant and system operator and the wind turbine service technician. However, there's also a lack of educational programs in New York City addressing these 10 careers. So NYSERDA's Offshore Wind Training Institute has allocated $9 million in funding for programs that address these gaps. We recommend that local colleges, including City College, build out appropriate programs that include both virtual education and hands-on lab equipment that could be installed in jails. So pillar two of our vision is for Rikers Redevelopment to help decarbonize the power grid. There's no top-down control of power generators as it's a market-based system. Power plants get built where they can get sited and make money. As you can imagine, New York City is a very hard place to build generation, hence why it's filled with old polluting natural gas generators. However, what can be done is through policy requirements on the utilities that buy power. And New York State has done this. So New York State requires Con Edison to buy zero emission power and they can offer incentives to companies to build zero emission generation. And that's what the state has done. So companies are building solar upstate, wind offshore, and transmission into the city. In fact, two zero emission projects totaling around 2,500 megawatts will be connecting to the Astoria substation, which is less than half a mile away from Rikers Island. There have been a lot of proposal for Rikers, which installs solar. We argue that the island should not be used for solar unless it's attached to buildings or other structures with other uses, um, as solar is land intensive and New York City is land constrained. For illustrative purposes, we blanket the available space not being used by DEP with solar arrays and the maximum power it could generate is 65 megawatts or less than 1% of the New York City summer load. Using conservative estimates on land use, a battery storage facility could house 3,300 megawatts of four, to four hour dispatch generation or 11% of the summer load. So batteries do not generate power, they shape power. The image shows this. The green line is the expected profile of an offshore wind generation by hour for a typical summer day. The dash line is the expected natural gas generation or peaker generation that would be required to meet New York City load. So for periods when the gener wind generates more than the city load, the battery gets charged, which is indicated by the blue area. For the time when the wind dies off and isn't generating enough to meet the city load, the battery discharges the purple area. So we completed a simple financial analysis of the proposed project. So using forecasted battery prices um, and historical capacity payments to peakers, we um, applied a 30% tax investment credit from the Inflation Reduction Act. However, we determined that the project would just break even. Therefore, it would not attract traditional project financing. However, we believe there's additional revenue streams available through the energy and ancillary markets. Furthermore, we believe that New York City should backstop the project financially due to the economic benefits realized from the emission reductions due to the displacement of peakers. Our third pillar explores how Rikers redevelopment can align with 1NYC, New York City's Green New Deal, to support the city's climate goals. One of the initiatives within Goal 6 of 1NYC, a livable climate, is to achieve carbon neutrality and 100% clean electricity. So we recommend that organic waste on Rikers be digested to create biogas to power the wastewater plant or get stored at the battery site. However, lessons learned from the nearby Newtown Creek wastewater treatment facility, which is pictured on the right, should be taken into consideration. 
Newtown creates a biogas, about 60% of which helps power the facility. The rest was supposed to be used to heat about 5,200 local homes, but is instead being flared off, releasing carbon dioxide. Funding for this initiative could come from the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. New York State will receive $2.6 billion for water infrastructure over the next five years. We also suggest that the island be used to explore aquaculture for water filtration and resiliency purposes. Kelp farms, for example, are a way to soak up carbon and nitrogen. And New Town Creek Alliance recently took on an experimental kelp project, pictured on the left. They also established an intertidal wetlands project in the lower middle of the screen, where they attached metal frames with salt marsh grasses along cement pilings in New Town Creek. Oyster reefs are another way to protect shorelines and filter water. Close to Rikers, the Billion Oyster Project recently constructed five acres of oyster reef habitat at the mouth of the Bronx River. These initiatives could be replicated on Rikers, and funding could come from the environmental bond measure, which New York just voted on in November. It allocates $4.2 billion in bonds for projects for water infrastructure and climate change mitigation. And aligning with goal seven of one NYC, efficient mobility, we also explored transportation options for Rikers. We looked into building a pedestrian and a bike bridge from Rikers to Hunts Point, uh, but we estimated that this would cost about 44 million. We also looked into expanding the NR subway line from Astoria, but estimated that that would cost $4.1 billion. In comparison, building a ferry station on Rikers on the Soundview line, as seen on the left side, excuse me, as seen on the right side of the screen, would cost between 12 to 15 million. Ferries will be the most cost effective and least disruptive to neighborhoods. They're also 100% in compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act. City bike should also be expanded to Rikers, and one of the three lanes on the Wono Bridge should be converted to protected bike lanes in both directions, as seen in the image on the lower left. Such projects could be financed with the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. New York State will receive $9.8 billion for transit over the next five years. So for our final vision of the island, we have the ferry station on the northwest part of the island, DEP's wastewater facility and organics processing on the left half of the island, um, a battery storage on the right side of the island, an experimental agriculture on the south side of the island, away from the shipping lanes, and finally the memorial. So once the city's renewable energy and DAP feasibility studies are complete, it will help frame the future use of Rikers Island further such that more focused visioning can take place. We have identified the following gaps in our vision and possible areas for further research. Our research does not consider how the redevelopment of Rikers can benefit the impacted community with mental health considerations. Further research is needed on the redevelopment of community spaces made available through the consolidation of wastewater treatment plants. There needs to be further financial modeling and valuation for the battery energy and ancillary services and possible public private partnerships to facilitate financing of the project. There needs to be a site specific investigation as to the feasibility of locating aquaculture resiliency projects in the space between Rikers and Queens. And finally, there needs to be an in depth investigation as to all possible funding sources and structures. So with, with that, we'd like to thank all the organizations and offices on the screen that we spoke to as part of our research. Thank you also to our advisor, Catherine Glody Silverman, to Michael Bobker, Professor Muhammad, and Professor Ettinger. And thank you all for listening. <laughs>